Hi there, welcome back to the 12 days of Christmas in July here at our little handmade home. Today is day 10, we're almost there, and as promised, we're back at the sewing machine today. I've got a great little table runner for you to make. You can whip it up in an afternoon, thanks to the best time saver around, the jelly roll. So let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do for this Christmas table runner is we're going to choose the fabrics that we're using. So I'm starting with a Moda Jelly Roll. This is Jolly Good and it is so pretty. I absolutely, I love unrolling Jelly Rolls because you just kind of never know what you're going to find. Okay, so I'm going to start at that end. I'm going to unroll it this way. And look at these beautiful prints in here. Now the jelly roll that I'm making today is for a specific spot in my home. I have the measurements that I need, but you could do this in any size. So let's take a quick flip through some of these. Oh, so pretty. That's very retro, how fun is that? These ones are beautiful. I mean, they're all beautiful. They really are classic stripes. These are very pretty. I think I have a sense of what I'm going to be doing here. These are the colors that my eye is really drawn to. These ones here. These blues. I think they're perfect for my living room, dining room area. So I'm going to pull these out. The rest of these you can see they are just gorgeous look at these colors they're fantastic all right so we're going to set the rest of this jelly roll aside because there will be plenty of other projects to do with that and we're going to take a look at what I have here so the area that I have to make the jelly roll for is it's a, a small hutch in our living room and it's quite narrow so I'm going to do a, a fairly narrow runner and I'm going to use five different prints for it. But the blues definitely fit that space very well. Oh, so retro. Love, love, love them. And those ones very pretty. I'm going to set those ones aside and I think what I'm going to use, I'm going to do this one, I think that one, that one, that one, this one, and this one. So these are going to be my colors. Let's see. Do I like that or do I like that better? Oh, I think maybe I like this one better. So I'm going to swap out the flowers for this one. It kind of reminds me of old those Christmas tree ornaments. It's very neutral, even though it's blue. What I'm going to do is, of course, I'm going to press them to get rid of this. And I'm going to stitch them all together in this order in long strips. So I'm gonna do that and I'll be right back with the next step. All right, we have our strips all sewn together. As you can see, I changed my mind at the last minute and put in the floral print instead of the other one. I just felt like it flowed a little better. The next thing we're gonna do is cut this. So I'm gonna take my, my cutting mat here and I'm going to cut this into chunks of 10 inches. That way I can get four out of the length that I have here. So I'll do that and we'll be right back. Once you have your pieces cut, arrange them so that the pattern is repeating. I mean, you could change it if you want to, but I want to have the same repeating pattern throughout. And then we're going to sew them together. We'll sew these two right sides together, these two right sides together, and then in the center so that we have one long strip and then we'll be back with the next step. 
Once you have all your pieces stitched together, it is time to cut your batting and your backing. You can use any kind of batting or backing that you like. Um, if you're gonna be using this type of runner on your dining table and putting hot dishes on it, you might want something a little thicker. You could use Insulbrite, you could use um, cotton, just use something that's gonna protect your surface. This is just gonna be a decorative one for me. So I'm gonna use an adhesive, um, an adhesive batting because I want to do a little bit of quilting on the top of this and that helps to hold everything together. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out my batting and my backing and do a little bit of quilting and I'll be back to show you the finished product. As you can see, I once again changed my mind on this. Um, I had in my cupboard, I actually had this jolly good yardage that I forgot I had. So I thought that might make a nice backing and binding. Not only that, but with the length of my runner, two pieces of jelly roll would not have been enough to create a full binding. And I'm, I'm not a fan of pieced binding. You can see for the quilting that I simply did quarter inch stitches along each of the seams, which I'm quite happy with the look of that. And I've got my binding on on the front and it's just waiting for me to stitch it by hand on the back. And once I have that finished, I'll show you the finished product. Thanks again for joining me for today's project. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I do. And keep in mind, this project is perfect for any time of year, not just Christmas. Think of the possibilities. Any links that I have for you will be down below, as well as all the other projects that came from days one through nine. So be sure to tune in tomorrow when I'm gonna have another pillow project for you. It's a really fun one, and it's gonna take even less time than this table runner. I'll see you then.